Okay, this video is for Windows users. We're going to download a new piece of software called Notepad++, which makes our life a little easier when we're writing or creating HTML files, um, in that we can write them on our local machine uh, using a mouse, <laughs> even. So we can avoid the use of Pico uh, on Copeland directly. Uh, we will have to transfer these files over to Copeland, ultimately. And we're going to use another piece of software for that. But this does make the writing of software easier as um, uh, Notepad++ um, colorizes our code and, and has a couple of other features that are kind of uh, interesting for us to make makes life easier for us. So let's just jump to my browser here real quick. What I did was I, I, um, I did a search for Notepad++, as you can see right here. And my first download here, Notepad++. And so that I'm going to do Notepad 7.9. I guess I'll use the Stand with Hong Kong version. All right, and then we can download. You can just stick with the 32-bit version. It's fine. Even if you have a 64-bit machine, it's not like this is a, a processor-intensive kind of software of any sort. So just click the download and install as you normally do. Um, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it here. So let me just bring up my version and let you see what I have. Once you get installed, um, you have a tabbed environment. Uh, your tabs are across the top there. I think you can see my the tabs that I have up there. These tabs, right? Um, you can do File New to create a new file. We want to be careful about where we put these files. This is going to be a very important portion of this, but for right now, we're just looking at the software. I can do File, New, and when I do that, um, I get a new tab, right? So one thing that we wanted to do with these, uh, Notepad++ can, can save in uh, the formatting of numerous languages. Uh, by, the, by that, I mean programming languages. and. And whatnot, and we're we're concerned with HTML, so we want our files to always have a .html extension. This is something that can be a little tricky in Windows because, by default, I believe Windows hides extensions from you, file extensions. Um, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it um, if we need to change something directly with Windows. But when we try to save these files, I just type some text in here. Um, I'm going to do save as. And I have a drop down here. Well, that's the file name. Uh, this is just I'm just doing a test here. I might be able to really save it. I just want to show you this drop down right here, or it's going up, but it's still called a drop down. So these are all the different file formats that you can save in, and you'll notice that it has they all have different extensions, right? So the file name dot whatever, whatever we want to. To save this as we want to save as um, dot html so we would look for the dot hypertext markup language here so we'll save this file as that all right so when we select that i can see in this bottom text box here that it's going to save as an html file so in my case here it's going to be test dot you see what it's going to save it as test dot html Okay, so we want to make sure that our files always have .html as a file extension. Oh, I don't want to say that. Sorry about that. You'll notice that, see my tab has red elements in it. It's because I haven't saved anything on it. If I do a control S and save right now, or save from up here, then that'll turn blue like the other ones are. This, I just don't need this. All right, so let's just take a peek at this file, for instance, which I created uh, for a previous video in this class. And you'll notice that, number one, there's colors here, which is kind of nice. Uh, but more so, when I click on one of these opening tags, the closing tag gets highlighted as well. The two get highlighted together, so I can see that they're open and closed together. Now, you'll see I'm always saying that we want to line them up vertically. In fact, Notepad++ puts a line in there for us to see. 
All right, so you can see that they're they're lined up vertically. This will this will do the same thing, and the anchor will do the same. Right, and there's my href, and if there's an error, um, something will go wrong in this. Let's make an error. Here, I just want to get one of them out of there. Well, it's not showing me that error, but it wasn't showing me ever before either. So I guess we saved or lost anything here. Well, we know that what should happen if that has a, the closed quote, then it should be in yellow that it's the href is working. And when we don't see it in yellow, then then something's wrong with what we've written there. So it's it uses colors to to help you um, notice things that are going wrong in the code. Um, and we want to save as .html. And so I've made some modifications. You see that my, my tab here is red again. So I'll do a control S to save and it went blue. Notice, so I know when I've got everything saved. All right, we want these to be in .html uh, file extension because that gives the .html file extension gives the browser a heads up that there's uh, HTML in this particular file that, and that HTML will need to be rendered. Um, oftentimes, if you have a, if, if you write up HTML in, in a, a plain text file, then, um, and you don't end it with a .html file extension, then um, your browser will show the HTML rather than render the HTML. So, and we don't want that. We also don't want to use a program like Word it, it has too many features, there's too much stuff. It messes up uh, our HTML. It winds up putting characters in there that we don't want. Uh, so we just wanna use a simple text editor. And this is a nice, simple text editor. It saves in plain text, which is what we want, but gives us these colorizing features. Uh, I think that's about it on this video. We're gonna, we're gonna want to, don't forget that, that these, oh, these, these files, I, we can view them on our local machine, they are HTML. The browser reads any HTML. Wait a minute, that's the wrong thing. This one, I want no pat plus plus. Yeah, I don't think that you can see my mouse up here, but there is a run up in the toolbar. Let's see if you can see this. You can't see that either. There is a run in the in the toolbar menu up at the top of the page, uh, above all the the uh, images that you have there. There's one called run and you can then click run and launch in any of the browsers that are installed on your machine. Although I have the Brave browser and it's not on that one. So it's not what's installed on your machine. It's these are the browsers that Notepad++ knows about. So I could say launch in Chrome and my Chrome just popped up. I'll show you my Chrome just popped up and these this is the uh, the text that's in that file now here's something to note will this work if I make if I try to zoom in um, it did not zoom in for you I don't think now so let's just forget about that and and I'll just try to explain it to you hopefully you can see the URL that I have up here and so while I'm it is true that I'm visiting I'm looking at an HTML page in my web browser. That doesn't mean that I'm viewing the, this web page as it exists on Copeland. This is a local file right now, and you can see it in the in the URL. Why is my URL now not highlighting? Now I've completely messed it up. There it is. So there you go. I'm trying to highlight that. So you see all the way on the left hand portion over here, it actually reads file, right? So this is just reading some local file and I can confirm that on a Windows machine, we know the root of the file system directory is C colon slash slash. Oh no, sorry, C colon slash. If we're reading this file off of Copeland, then it should read here HTTP colon slash slash udel.edu slash tilde your username, right? So this is not reading from Copeland. This is a local file. If you were to send me this, I would not be able to see this file because I don't have access 
to your local machine, right? Um, you do not, unless you, unless you had a web server running on your local machine, but that still wouldn't be the right way to, to, to do the URL. If I try to click a link that reads C colon something, my browser believes I'm talking about C colon, one, colon whatever that was on my machine. It doesn't know to go to your machine or to anyone's machine. It would try to look on my machine for a file that I have locally, right? So we want to just recognize that, right? Ultimately, these files that we create need to be put onto Copeland so that they're viewable on the web. Files that you have locally on your local machine are not viewable on the web. So that's the one thing, the one caveat we have here. We can write the files nicely with this software, but we won't be able, they're not, they're not on the web server. We're gonna use another piece of software to get the files moved over uh, to Copeland. That'll be on the next video, <laughs> which will apply to both Windows and Mac users, I believe. All right, that's it on this one.